Colin, I'm good. How are you doing? Um, a lot of people have described the show as sort of rightfully so, I think, as Veronica Mars was not with zombies. Uh, and that's not a bad thing at all, I don't think. Uh, was that ever sort of an intention to, to be similar to that? Um. It, it, like we never well here's uh, sort of um, in, in this way um, the way uh, the show came to me was the head of uh, development at Warner Brothers uh, an executive who I really trust and like um, came to me and just set the iZombie uh, comic book like the first episode down in front of me and said uh, the CW needs a new kick ass female hero this is it we need the new Buffy, the new Veronica. This is her. Please write this. And so, to a certain degree of trying to write a kick-ass, uh, and she was already blonde. You know, I, I didn't that she was going to be blonde. Um, I so, I guess I wish uh, Rose were like five eleven. That was I could. So I didn't keep reading Petite Blonde Crime Fighter. Uh, that's that's my specialty. That's that's really my sweet spot. Um, and some of it is just I, I think some of the feel is just um, that Diane and I the reason we found each other as writers is we have this similar affinity for this tone this like I would say Heathers would be like a tentpole movie for either of us this kind of stylized um, you know sharp talking young people thing that blends comedy and drama and so we were writing in our wheelhouse with Veronica Mars and so we sound like we sound. I mean, that's just sort of the tone that uh, we write in. So that's part of it as well. I don't mind the comparisons, but I didn't. I didn't start out thinking I'm going to write Veronica Mars with zombies. But I totally get why it's an easy comparison. I, you know, when Diane and I were thinking about it, though, we talked so much more about Buffy than we talked about Veronica. Like, given that we were, you know, we were going to have zombies, it felt more of a genre piece and. Uh, um, and so that was, I, I would say we aimed more for Buffy, but I'm fine with Buffy. <laughs> I did hear, this made, what made my day today um, is that uh, Raul Coley uh, ran into Joss Whedon last night, and Joss said, oh, I love your show. And I had not, and he was such a, a, a supporter of Veronica Mars, I had had no idea if he had watched iZombie or, or not. I was really thrilled to hear that he was watching iZombie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Together, guys, have such great chemistry. Oh, together. thanks. I love how you guys interact with each other and talk about the episode. You can feel the passion uh -huh. that you have for the show and for the writing and everything. So when you do these episodes, and I was asking Diane about that, and she was saying that you guys kind of you are kind of further into it in every episode. So right. You would say about ninety percent, a hundred percent, a little bit in every episode that you guys have had. Yeah, I mean, and when we hire a writing staff, um, the number one thing we're looking for is our, its tone. You know, like I'll, I'll read almost anything, but we're looking for snappiness. You know, we're we're like we all like if, if you know like a if I'm hiring a staff writer, or some you know, low-level writer, I almost don't care if the story works in that episode, in their sample. I just want to know that the dialogue feels like our dialogue. So we're we're trying to, and it's it's a weird thing because you read you read a lot of half hour writers and that doesn't feel like our show, and then you read the procedural drama writers and that doesn't feel like our show. We are really looking for people who will fuse those things, and you know we want to be funny without sacrificing, you know, having real emotional moments that you know at the end of the day that's what's it's going to keep people coming back to the show, I think. Would you ever be interested in taking it to a really large scale? Yes, but I think, I mean, there are a couple issues with that. I, I think if we ever get to that place, and, it, and it's not uh, it's not like we are going there in season five, but it, it's something we've discussed, like what happens if there, can we keep playing a small zombie universe, or at some point does the infection break out? 
Uh, if we are a huge hit show, we might have the budget to go big with, but like every time we do like one of our Romero zombies right now, I'm sure, first of all, Walking Dead, they have a bigger budget and they've, and they've got it down to a science. It's like a $10,000 budget hit whenever we do the prosthetics for one, one of the truly, you know, like old school zombies. Um, so we'd have to be doing pretty well. I am interested in it. It has been much discussed. If we do, I think it would be more like a season five sort of idea because we still we still still have ideas we're excited about for the next couple of seasons at least. Yeah, I mean, it, like a big storyline for Ravi in season two is a search for more you tainted utopian. Like that's the key ingredient. It existed. Like he only had a few samples, and they were like samples that he pulled off of dead bodies uh, uh, from the original boat massacre. He's out of it now to make more of a new cure. They have to find this exact formula, and that will be his great white whale of season two. And meanwhile. While you know the the cure that they do have has some very serious side effects, and those will start, we'll have fun with those, and those will come into effect. Or one of them you'll see right in episode one, um, but there will be more than that initial one. Is that it? All right, thanks everyone. All right. Oh, okay.